and to inherit the kingdom that he promised to those he loved. But you have insulted the poor. Is it not the rich who are exploiting you? Are not the rich ones the ones dragging you into court? Are they not the ones who are slandering the noble name of him to whom you belong? Jeremiah warns us about the deceitfulness of our heart. The heart's deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Realizing that David was very slowly starting this slippery slope fade away from God, he writes Psalms 139. And in verses 23 and 24, he says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. See if there's any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. I wonder, as I think about Judas, who looked good on the outside, but whose heart was far away from God, who, if he showed up tomorrow, I'm sure would be dressed nicely and he would, he would walk the walk. He would talk the talk. Would be accepted here. Because we're a lot like Judas. That we show up and on the outside we know how to play the game. On the outside we know the things to say. When we come to church on a Sunday morning, we have everything just the way it should be. But by our actions, the things that we do Monday through Saturday, we're far away from God. What do I mean? I mean, we show up to church on Sunday and we have our Bible and we got our Sunday best. Say, pray for me, brother or sister. I've got some things that I'm working on. But then Monday through Saturday, the things that we're working on is we're, we're out of the bars and we're drinking. Maybe it's beating our, our wives. We're not being honorable to our spouses. Maybe it's in our businesses that we're skimming off the top. We think, well, no one's ever going to really know. And then we show up and then we tithe on the stuff that we're skimming on so we believe that we're okay. Friends, it's all about the matter of heart. I love when David says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Why? Why does he say, search me, O God, and know my heart? Because all of us around here, we play the game, we do a very good job of walking the walk. We even talk the talk. And only God has the ability to look down from heaven and realize that our deceitful hearts far away from him. And I worry. Because how many of us are more like Judas than Peter? I love what Paul says in Corinthians chapter 7. He tells us that godly sorrow brings about repentance that leads to salvation and leaves no regret. But worldly sorrow brings about death. The prerequisite for forgiveness from God. It says, if we confess our sins, then He is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Do you hear that? We have, we have a job. It's a free gift of salvation. But we have to do a part. What's our part? To search ourselves. Say, okay, God, here's the deal. There's a sin in my life. And when we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. When Judas, who betrayed Jesus, saw that he was condemned to death, Judas was in a seized with remorse and he turned the 30 silver coins to the chief priests and the elders. I have sinned, he said, for I have betrayed innocent blood. They looked at him and replied, what is that to us? That's your responsibility. Hmm. You know what Judas did? 
He wouldn't hang himself. At the point it tells us, he was seized with remorse. He had this grief. He had this sorrow. See, I can't believe, like, again, I, we can tell the backstory of Jesus. I, I, I truly believe that he was trying to force the hand of Messiah. He believed that Jesus was going to be a political Messiah, that he was going to overthrow the Roman government. When we see that he's condemned to death and he's hanging upon the cross, Judas isn't overwhelmed with godly sorrow, he's overwhelmed with worldly sorrow. So now what do I do? He figured his sin was so big. Well, how would, how would God forgive him? And he goes and he hangs himself. And again, I wonder, are we Judas? Now the fact that, that we betray God, but every time that we take his name in vain and we continue to sin, even though we say we're believers, taking his name in vain, betraying that faith. But are we Judas because we're saying, God, this is how big my sin is. There is no way. When we spiritually went out and hanged ourselves, and God is saying, are you kidding me? Why are you were enemies of me? I've died for you. But all you have to do is admit that you're a sinner and be forgiven. I wish that Judas, I wish Judas would have had that, would have understood that. Why? He would have been the greatest apostle, right? He would have the greatest story. Hey, I was the one that betrayed Jesus, but he forgave me. <laughs> so friends, if you're here today and you say, you know what? I don't believe I've ever asked Jesus to come into my heart. And you want to tell me the big laundry list or how big your sin is, go right ahead and try to tell me how big your sin is, because I'll tell you how big my God is. Amen. Amen. Because God will forgive you of all to everything that you've ever done. I'd love to talk with you. I'd love to pray with you. But for those that have already asked Jesus into your life, and you're saved, and sanctified, and on your way to heaven, we believe that. I challenge you every day. Pray Psalm 139, 23 and 24. Search me, O oh God, and know my heart. Remember last week we talked about, we, we sometimes believe in the church. If I could just obtain this level of righteousness and just stay right there. No! You can't stay right there. You're either on an incline growing closer to God, or you're on a decline moving away from God. <laughs> Judas declined, moved away from God. A way that you can grow in your faith every single day. Pray Psalm 139, 23, and 24. Search me, O God, and know my heart. See if there's any wicked way inside of me. And guess what? When you pray that, be careful. Mm -hmm. And you get a little tap from the Holy Spirit on your shoulder. Hey, do you remember when you said? Hey, do you remember when you... Hey... Because when we confess our sins, He is faithful and just will forgive us of our sins, purify us of all unrighteousness, and lead us in His way everlasting. Friends, this is how we're going to close our service today. We're going to partake of communion. And again, I, I, love, I love the words of God. I wish that everybody would read them more and more and more so you could become more in love with the words of God. And this is one of the things that Paul writes about the Holy Meal, the communion. That if anybody should take communion in an unworthy manner, she'll die. Now, could you imagine that? Right? But today you have the juice in the cup, and if you're walking up, right, I can almost hear the music. Ooh. And you realize that there's sin in your life and you're just testing the spirit. I'm going to try it. If literally an unworthy man means you know that there's sin in your life, the Holy Spirit has said something to you, 
And as soon as you start to eat the bread or drink the cup, like if you just fell over dead, do you know what, would, you know what would happen? Everybody else would be like, Bleh! All right, God, please forgive me for any sin that I please ever, right? But again, it's the grace of God, right? To, un- to take it in an unworthy manner means you know that there is willful sin in your life. You realize that you're on the path leading you away from God, and you come up here and say, ah, flippantly, I'm just going to take of his body and his bread, of his blood. Don't do that. We're going to stand with me. We're, we're going to end with this song. So go ahead and stand up. We're going to end with this song in preparation for communion. Stand all over this place. And it's Psalm 139, verses 23 and 24. It just says, it's going to be a new song to you, a song that we've never sung before, and it's going to be really simple. It says, Search me, O God, and know my heart.